Hey guys, there's one thing I forgot to tell you about, and it's about surface area contact. I think this is going to be really helpful to you as you do the day, the day 10 synthesis task. So I want to show you something. Okay. Um, if we have this fatty acid salt molecule, let me move out to the side for a sec, and then we have this fatty acid salt molecule that is actually able to come into the space between these molecules, you can kind of play around with where the molecule is um, from time to time. So at this point, um, there's a nonpolar region of the fatty acid salt molecule right next to the polar regions of the phospholipids. And the polar region of the um, fatty acid salt is up here. And then there's like water all around here. And so the water is polar and this is nonpolar. So this is going to be energetically pretty unstable because um, the polar regions are going to want to attract to each other. And then the nonpolar regions, because of London dispersion forces, are going to want to come next to each other as well. So this molecule is probably going to just sink down like this until the polar regions are near to each other. Okay, but here's the thing. Um, this is an unsaturated fatty acid salt, which means that there's this kink in it, which means there's a bend. So think about how, like this phospholipid, for example, if this is really close to this other phospho phospholipid molecule, look at how many, look, look at how like nicely those interactions happen. Like the distance between each atom and each atom is pretty consistent and pretty close. Okay, and the reason why that distance matters is because of what we saw in this simulation. Okay, if you have two molecules so far away and you press play, these molecules are not really going to do very much. There's not a lot of attraction. Okay, they really have to be a lot closer for that attraction to really start to pull the two molecules together. Okay. So if you're thinking about a viral particle and you're looking at the membrane and you're, look, you're trying to imagine how this membrane is holding together, the, the different lipid tails have to be relatively close to each other, pretty close for those attractive forces to actually hold them together. Okay, there might be some vibration like this where molecules kind of bounce uh, back and forth. That's pretty normal, but if you're able, if, if something like this fatty acid salt comes in and wedges itself in between these two phospholipids, this phospholipid and this phospholipid are now really too far apart. Like those London dispersion forces are not going to hold each other together. And because this is a kinked molecule, a bent molecule, um, the, the molecule is not able to align itself as closely. So there's not as many close points of contact between the um, the temporary dipoles that are formed within parts of this molecule and parts of this molecule and parts of this molecule. So in this situation, it's more of like this, where you have some regions where atoms are really close and there is attraction, then some regions where the, um, the atoms in the different molecules are really far apart and there's like no attraction. And when that happens, um, the attractions of water and the polar head of the fatty acid salt and the polar head of the phospholipid, those, um, those attractions are able to sort of win out and start to pull these phospholipids out of the bilayer and start to form the micelles that eventually like have that chunking effect to sort of break chunks in the membrane. Okay. Um, so again, this is, this is my claim. Um, I didn't quite get to show you this earlier, but um, if you look here, this is a journal article, which is basically showing that um, there's not a huge amount of understanding of how all of this works. Let me know if you're not able to get to this because it's a cool article and I'll, I'll try and link it a different way. Um, but otherwise, I hope that was useful. Um, remember, surface area contact matters. It's, it's so huge, I think. All right.